Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. The U.S. Supreme Court is about to make a landmark decision. Will they homosexualize marriage? We have a Skype interview with our friend Janet Porter, made a film, Light Wins, right now. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt. You're watching PIJN News. I'm Dr. Chaps, and on this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray with us? We're joined by a prayer warrior via Skype from Ohio, Janet Porter, a frequent contributor to our show. Welcome, Janet. Thanks so much, chaps. Glad to be here. So, Janet, today we're going to make any last minute predictions and at last minute prayers, invite our audience to pray before the US Supreme Court comes out at the end of June with their landmark decision. Everyone's anticipating, are they going to enforce the 10th Amendment of the Constitution and protect states' rights to define marriage? Or will they enforce what some say is the 14th Amendment of the Constitution, which uh, could end up homosexualizing marriage in all 50 states? Do you have any predictions and what are your thoughts? Well, here's my thoughts. I, I don't think people really realize what's at stake. We have, at this moment, freedom hanging by a thread. If the Supreme Court rules wrong, if they homosexualize marriage, with the homosexualizing of marriage comes the criminalization of Christianity. That's what's at stake. And that's why I'm encouraging people, uh, till this decision is handed down, the end of the month, to fast and pray. We need some high-octane prayer because right now our freedoms are at stake. And that's, so that's really what's in the balance. So my prediction is we pray like, like freedom depends on it, uh, but we brace ourselves. If, if this court rules wrong, then we need to be able to obey God rather than men. Now, there have been two arguments made before the court. One is in favor of love and equality, and that's in favor of homosexual marriage. And they say, oh, it's love, it's not lust. Uh, and they say they wanna have equal rights, which we've disputed that. But then the Christian argument, or, or at least our side of the constitutional argument, has to do with them imposing their power upon us, upon our children, upon our photographers and florists and bakers, who must be ordered by the government to participate in their homosexual weddings with which we disagree. Is there any room for compromise? Can the two sides have their, their way uh, together? There really isn't. Uh, I actually made an entire film about this subject so that we could hear the case for marriage that we haven't thus far heard. Uh, one of the things that, uh, that uh, uh, Bill Donahue of the Catholic League said is, is what they're trying to do right now is to, to put something that isn't, take something that isn't in the Constitution, namely homosexual rights, and let it trump what is in the Constitution, and that's our First Amendment rights, our First Amendment freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom of association. And they're trying to make it so that nebulous uh, 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 that right that isn't in the Constitution somehow trumps what is listed first in the Constitution, the First Amendment to the Constitution. And that's the issue. What we're looking to do, and we're seeing it all over the country, where uh, city council ordinances are, are trumping the First Amendment, where we're seeing now uh, uh, fraudulent marriage uh, uh, decisions coming from the federal courts, trumping what people used to have is a freedom of religion. Uh, because it's not just businesses, chaps. They're not just going after the, the bakers and the florists and the, and the photographers and saying, we're going to mandate, we're gonna make sure you bow to the state-enforced homosexual agenda or you will go out of jail, you'll go out of business or face jail time. They're now doing that to pastors. In Idaho, as we've probably talked on this program before, there are actually pastors that, that have a gun to their head, essentially, with the state telling them, if you don't oversee homosexual so-called weddings, you're going to go to jail. 
These are people, these elderly people who are facing, really, with multiple offenses, <laughs> offenses, in other words, multiple ability to say, no, I, I would not like to participate in something to which I'm morally opposed. Uh, these are people that could be facing not just 18 months in jail at each offense, but they could be facing the rest of their life in jail. What Along about the five, the five pastors in Houston? What happened to them with the subpoenas? Well, what happens, a lot of people breathe the sigh of relief to say, oh, they yanked those subpoenas. What happened was the federal, the, the, the state, excuse me, the city government uh, came in and demanded their sermons. And they were basically going through their sermons, wanting to scrutinize, did they say something that they quote from Romans chapter 1 or from 1 Corinthians? Because that's not allowed anymore. No, no, no. What's happening is now they, they withdrew that because of the public pressure. Keep in mind. This is the lesson to be heard. Public pressure is what pushes back this assault against our freedoms. But what happened? Well, Anise Parker, the mayor of Houston, went after the plaintiffs in the case, those who have signed the petitions, and among them were, guess what, pastors. And guess what they required? Sermons. So while everybody breathed a nice sigh of relief thinking, oh, wow, that, that bullet is dodged, they're going after different pastors, and they're demanding their sermons. That's what's going on, and we need to rise up against it and be ready for a horrendous decision. But I say, you know, I told many people, maybe you heard some of them on the conference calls we were on, I don't think if we knew Roe versus Wade that was going to assault life was coming down in a couple of weeks that we'd sit on their hands and say, well, you know, that's too bad. I, I, you know, what should we do about that? March for another 40 years in the cold against it? No, I say we use every bit of our freedoms we have to fight back, to let the Supreme Court know we will not obey an unjust ruling. And that's exactly what we did, chaps. We stood at the Supreme Court the day before the oral arguments in this case, and we had, uh, f well, now we've delivered more than 40, excuse me, 400,000 restraining orders. What this means is we're telling the court no. No, don't undermine our sovereign vote. Don't take away our state constitutions or our freedom of religion or the sanctity of marriage between one man and one woman. And we actually uh, helped to initiate a bill in Congress, one in the Senate, introduced by uh, Congressman Steve King and by uh, Senator Ted Cruz, which will restrain the judges if we can get it passed in time. And they've Meantime, talked about restraining, in fact, uh, Former Majority Leader Tom DeLay said that when he was in Congress, he repeatedly passed good bills that limited the jurisdiction of judges to be able to even hear cases like this. Is that what your restrainthejudges.com sure. website is, is oriented toward? You know, a lot of people think, well, the Supreme Court, there's nothing we can do because they're supreme. No, 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 no. What we have is a, a remedy that our founding fathers, in their wisdom, put into the Constitution. Article 2, Section 3 says that Congress, who creates the courts, can limit the courts. And they can limit the appellate jurisdiction of the Supreme Court. And the case that the Supreme Court has, like all cases, is an appellate case. So Congress could actually, if they wanted to, as they've done before, say that, that you can't even hear the case on marriage before they hand down a decision which could undermine and, and redefine marriage and, and take away our freedoms right along with it. And so they have the ability. In fact, this has happened many times, including Tom Daschle. You remember him, former Senate Majority Leader. He actually didn't like the fact that the, the federal courts were ruling on his home state uh, brush clearing, brush fires in South Dakota. He thought that issue was so important that he actually passed a bill, went through the Senate, went through the House, signed into law, and, and it said that the federal courts cannot rule regarding brush fires. And what we're saying is that the institution of marriage is far more valuable, far more important than brush fires in South Dakota, and we should use this constitutional remedy in this case, much like they did there. We're going to a commercial break. Mention your website quickly. Sure, F is in faith, the number two, A is in action, dot org, F2A.org. And where do people sign that petition? You can go to restrainthejudges.com and you can send your petitions to the court and to Congress at restrainthejudges.com. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back with Janet Porter. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Do you care about your family? About your children? Of course you do. But you need to take action today because they're under attack. 
sign a petition at PrayInJesusName.org to protect traditional marriage. Here are three specific petitions you can sign. Number one is to stop ENDA. This is the so-called Employment Non-Discrimination Act, but it's actually a bathroom bill that will punish Christians. It's introduced by a homosexual congressman, Jared Polis from Colorado, and it's really just a bathroom bill in disguise. Ladies and little girls, next time you go into the ladies' room at any public restaurant, you might run into somebody who looks like this if ENDA becomes law. We need to stop this because here's the actual, actual language of the bill. They don't want you to read this. It says dresser grooming standards must be permitted for any employer who has an employee who's undergoing or may someday go undergo a gender transition after the time of employment. Well, this gives them permission to have the same dress or grooming standards to which they're transitioning. In other words, they don't even need a sex change. A man can go into a lady's room and assault you and your little girl if ENDA becomes law. And they'll punish the Christian business owner if he doesn't allow that. Number two petition you can sign is to stop the Homosexual Classrooms Act. That's being introduced by Senator Al Franken of Minnesota, actually to defund your public school if you don't force the teachers to promote homosexuality to all of the children as, as young as kindergarten in the guise of anti-bullying lectures. They're really just recruiting your kids into the gay agenda. Petition number three you can sign at PrayInJesusName.org is to defend traditional marriage. The 1996 Defense of Marriage Act is under fire, but it defines marriage simply between one man and one woman. Sign these petitions today. Go to PrayInJesusName.org and take action. Empowering you, the grassroots activist. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. I'm joined again by my dear and longtime friend, Janet Porter from Ohio. Janet, welcome back. And you helped me get started really in media. When I was a chaplain in the Navy, you had a national radio show and I was a frequent guest on that show because you helped me petition Congress and defend religious liberty. And you helped us get the law changed so that military chaplains can pray in Jesus name. So I just wanna thank you for doing that. And it's my privilege, Chaplain. It was my privilege. You were actually my most frequent guest uh, that year of, of that assault against our freedoms. But, but, but here's the deal. Freedom matters. The freedom to pray in Jesus' name, the freedom to practice our faith, the freedom to be able to, to, to not be coerced by the, the strong arm of the government to participate in something the Bible says is sin. Freedom matters. You know, this, this, is, this is what America's all about. We are the land of the free only as long as we remain the home of the brave. So you are taking a stand even today uh, to send petitions to Congress. As you mentioned, 400,000 restraining orders delivered to the Supreme Court and to Congress to limit the power of federal judges. But if the Supreme Court gets this decision wrong and if they rule to homosexualize marriage, there have been some people calling for civil disobedience. I've seen statements from Dr. James Dobson, uh, Majority Leader Tom DeLay, uh, Rick Santorum said something the other week. What is your stand? Did you sign something what, that went in the Washington Post? I did, I was a, a signee on that letter and, and it all comes down to this, chaps. Are you gonna obey God or are you going to obey men? That's it. That, that really is what we're faced with right now. And, uh, and, and I, I choose God. <laughs> As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And I don't care what the Supreme Court rules. We will not participate in something the Bible calls sin, period. So what does civil disobedience look like? And, and what, how could it cost us if we don't obey? Well, it could cost us our livelihood. It could cost us our freedom. I mean, we're looking at a situation where, um, let, let me put it this way. The film that I produce called Light Whims, How to Overcome the Criminalization of Christianity, will probably be, be declared illegal in Canada. But it may very well be declared illegal in America. Why? Because we are espousing a biblical view, which if the Supreme Court rules wrong, what does that mean? That means that with that decision, comes government-enforced homosexual marriage, so-called marriage. That means that's what they teach to your children in the schools, that's what they enforce to businesses. Because to disagree with homosexuality is now on the, the equivalence of racism. They're now saying that's discrimination. 
And that's why we saw uh, Aaron and Melissa Klein go out of business. They may lose their home. Why? Because they said, well, I'd be happy to make a cake for you, uh, uh, Miss uh, Lesbian Customer, but I cannot in good conscience participate in what you call a, a, a lesbian wedding. And so we're seeing that happen. Arlene Flowers, Baron L. Stutzman, the same kind of thing. We saw in New Mexico uh, the, the, uh, 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 the photographer. We're, we're basically looking at fines in the thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars, but we're now looking also at the strong arm of the government now encroaching into the church. I mean, to think about this, if I would have told you 20 years ago that there would be a government entity coming in, knocking on the door of the church, and demanding the sermons for government review, you'd say this is something out of Nazi Germany. But that's really what we're facing. What we saw there, and as someone spelled out in my film, is that if you don't preach the state-approved message, then you might be seeing your churches close as well as your businesses close. We're going to see kids told that they can't attend a private school. Now think about this. If you have a, say you have a Christian school with Christian standards, biblical standards that say such things as fornication is wrong, adultery is wrong, homosexual behavior is wrong, guess what? The government's going to come in and say, no, no, you can't say that anymore, or you're going to lose your ability to, to have a, 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 a state school. So imagine this, the state school closes down its private institution, tries to open up as a public institution, guess what? They can't do that either. So in other words, we can't teach our children the Christian message anymore. Because and the, threat, again, the threat at the Supreme Court was to take away the tax exempt status of Christian universities like Liberty University or Regent University. If they don't endorse homosexual marriage, the Solicitor General, uh, Donald Borelli, admitted during oral arguments, yeah, did. that could be a problem. They might lose their tax exempt status if they don't uh, jump on board with gay marriage. It's a problem, but think of this, chaps. Then they can't open up as another kind of institute, another uh, state school, because that also is discriminatory. In other words, you cannot have a Christian school that teaches Christian values in a post-bad Supreme Court ruling, which is why it's, it's not too late. And this is the appeal I'm making. The appeal that we're asking for people to make is the appeal to heaven. It's the flag you saw. In fact, maybe uh, you can show the picture. We were there at the Supreme Court, and the first thing we did is hold up that appeal to heaven flag and cry out to God. It's the same flag that our founding fathers used because they faced impossible odds too. They faced the most powerful nation on earth, England, coming after a ragtag team of, of patriots uh, to go up against the, the most powerful nation on earth. But they did what John Locke wrote about. When you don't know what else to do, make an appeal to heaven. Janet, we like to we like to pray on this TV show. Would you lead us in prayer right now? Sure would. We've appealed to the court. We've appealed to Congress. We now appeal to heaven. And so, Father, we lift up with heavy hearts our nation. God, the nation that you birthed, one nation under God. I am asking you, Father, to do what many say can't be done. The enemy has seemingly taken over this country in a generation. We're asking you, the God who sits above the circle of the earth, who laughs at the plans of the enemy, we're asking for you to intervene on behalf of a remnant that stands in the gap, crying out for our nation, crying out for mercy, not because we deserve it, but because of your grace. We're asking, Father, give us your grace. Give us a decision that does not redefine marriage into what you call evil, what you call an abomination, because we're asking God for more freedom, more freedom to speak the truth, more freedom to, to proclaim the gospel. We're asking God for your mercy for our nation so that, so that we will use the freedom and our children will enjoy the freedoms we grew up uh, uh, enjoying so that your truth and your gospel will pro be proclaimed legally in the United States of America. I pray it in Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. We're gonna take a two minute break. When we come back, Janet Porter will talk about what's going on in Texas. Giving you a megaphone in Washington, D.C. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Do you care about your family, about your children? Of course you do, but you need to take action today because they're under attack. Sign a petition at PrayInJesusName.org to protect traditional marriage. Here are three specific petitions you can sign. 
Number one is to stop ENDA. This is the so-called Employment Non-Discrimination Act, but it's actually a bathroom bill that will punish Christians. It's introduced by a homosexual congressman, Jared Polis from Colorado, and it's really just a bathroom bill in disguise. Ladies and little girls, next time you go into the ladies' room at any public restaurant, you might run into somebody who looks like this if ENDA becomes law. We need to stop this because here's the actual, actual language of the bill. They don't want you to read this. It says dresser grooming standards must be permitted for any employer who has an employee who's undergoing or may someday go undergo a gender transition after the time of employment. Well, this gives them permission to have the same dress or grooming standards to which they're transitioning. In other words, they don't even need a sex change. A man can go into a ladies room and assault you and your little girl if ENDA becomes law. And they'll punish the Christian business owner if he doesn't allow that. Number two petition you can sign is to stop the Homosexual Classrooms Act. That's being introduced by Senator Al Franken of Minnesota, actually to defund your public school if you don't force the teachers to promote homosexuality to all of the children as, as young as kindergarten in the guise of anti-bullying lectures. You're really just recruiting your kids into the gay agenda. Petition number three you can sign at PrayInJesusName.org is to defend traditional marriage. The 1996 Defense of Marriage Act is under fire, but it defines marriage simply between one man and one woman. Sign these petitions today. Go to PrayInJesusName.org and take action. He is the intersection of church and state. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back. We're joined again by Janet Porter. Janet, you made this movie, Light Wins. It's up for, or it was just endorsed by the Dove Awards. Talk about that and we'll show the 30 second clip. Sure, uh, the Dove Foundation just came out and uh, said it was encouraging and hopeful and something they called family friendly. They endorsed it and that's encouraging as well as a lot of the pro-family leaders who've come out in support of what I believe is the case for marriage the nation has not heard. Wandering through darkness that was never meant to be where there is no light your people cannot see no matter how loud it's shouted sin is not a civil right and calling evil good will never make it right so stand up and shine your light for jesus don't bow down to anyone but So Janet, where can people get the DVD for Light Wins? Sure, you can go to lightwinsthemovie.com uh, and uh, you can order it in bulk. That's what I encourage a lot of churches are now doing so that they can actually make money uh, and uh, sell it. A lot of people are using it as a fundraising tool. It's a way to equip the church to shine in this great darkness. And the good news is, in the battle between darkness and light, light wins. That's the good news. So you might feel overwhelmed by the darkness that's going on. Every email you get is more bad news and more more darkness, more, more it seems, limitations to our freedoms. But if we as the church will only shine, uh, well, it's in the battle between darkness and light. It's not even a contest. Light will just dispense darkness. It will extinguish the darkness every single time. And I think you might even see Dr. Chaps in the trailer. I think I was interviewed for that. If you dig for it, you might see some of my words. Janet, yeah, we you're- just got an, a whole uh, hour and a half of extra features and one whole extra feature of one of my favorite parts of the movie is on the military. And you are prominently featured in that and we're very grateful for that. Well, you're very kind. What's going on in Texas? The legislature just adjourned for two years. They only meet every two years, but, uh, and they passed some, good resolutions there, but you're doing something else. 
Yeah, we, 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 there was a bill there, uh, the Freedom of Marriage and Conscience uh, uh, Clause, uh, Freedom of Conscience, and I'm trying to think now the name. Uh, it's a bill that would not only protect marriage, that was voted on by the people of Texas by a 76% margin. That's almost 8 out of 10 in the state of Texas protected marriage by a vote of the people, properly passed state amendment that protects marriage as a union of one man and one woman. State Sovereignty and Marriage Act, that's what it is. And so they, they tried to get the bill through, but the clock ran out. So what we're asking for Governor Greg Abbott, who is a pro-marriage, pro-freedom kind of guy, and we're asking him to call a special session, something that Governor Perry in, in Texas has, did, has done many times on the issue of life and other critical issues. We're saying marriage matters so much because freedom comes along with it. And we're asking him to have a special session to get that bill through that will protect marriage, which was, again, what the people of Texas wanted, to not have their vote taken from them, their state constitution put through the shredder. But it also says, here's the here's kind of one of the, the key provisions in this bill. It says that no state money will be used to enforce an unjust Supreme Court ruling. So well, that bill if, was, was not passed yet, but you've created this 30 second commercial asking people to call Governor Greg Abbott to have an extra session. Let's watch that clip. 76% of Texans voted for the marriage amendment. But what good is the right to vote if an overreaching Supreme Court can undermine marriage and our liberty? I've been fighting for something that I will never stop fighting for. I've been fighting for your liberty itself yes. against an overreaching federal government that's trying to run too much of your lives. Call Governor Abbott and tell him to keep his promise and call a special session to defend the Texas Marriage Amendment. So Janet, thank you for being an advocate. We have about one minute left. Mention your website and how people can pray with you. Sure, uh, you can come to my main website, which is faith to action f 2a.org, but I would encourage you, you can watch the trailer, the longer trailer, and, and uh, order some, some DVDs to get out to, to equip your church. Uh, you can go to lightwindsthemovie.com, lightwindsthemovie.com, and there's still time to send a restraining order to the nine justices of the Supreme Court, and also to Congress at restrainthejudges.com restrainthejudges.com. Thanks so much, chaps. I appreciate your stand for freedom, your stand for marriage, and uh, I believe that if we all stand in the gap and fast and pray, we may just see these impossible, so-called impossible mountains move, and we can experience freedom for a while longer. Amen to that. Ladies and gentlemen, call our prayer line at 866-Obey-God. God bless you in Jesus' name. We'll see you next time. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.